All right, it's a long journey. This is the, the last step um, in our journey. As you know, in the last two objectives, all we were doing were adjusting entries. Again, that double checking process to make sure all the revenues are accounted for for that period and all the expenses are accounted for in that period of time. But as you know, adjusting entries need to go into the journal. And everything you put in the journal gets posted to the ledger. So after you're done with that adjusting process, your ledger balances have changed in those accounts that are affected. So now we have to make sure that the ledger after all those adjustments have been done, that the ledger itself is balanced. So this is what we call an adjust to trial balance and that's where we're gonna to start today. Once our adjust to trial balance is balanced, those are the numbers that we use to prepare the financial statements. Okay, so this is our lesson today, this part. This is what you're supposed to be focused on. Okay. So as it says, and as I've said, everything, all those entries start in a journal. And if they start, if they are put in the journal, they will be posted to the ledger accounts. So for those accounts that were affected, right, we went over those seven pairs, like supplies, expense, and supplies, and accounts receivable and sales revenue. So all those accounts have been affected. So that means the uh, ledger balances in those accounts are affected. So we have to do something called an adjusted trial balance, which is simply a trial balance after the adjustments have been done. That's it. That's all that adjusted trial balance is. You're doing another trial balance, but now it's after the adjustments. So they call it the adjusted trial balance. That's all you need to know about that. Okay, and again, the adjusted trial balance is simply going to prove that your debit balances and credit balances in your ledger are, are balanced, right? They equal. So that's the primary step that we do now that we've done all those journal entries for adjustments. Once we actually have an adjusted trial balance that balances, this becomes the primary way, these are where the numbers are that we use to prepare the financial statements, okay? And these financial statements are the final financial statements for the period of time. These are, uh, this, this is the culmination of all that work that we did are gonna be in those final financial statements. And because we've already done that adjustment process of double checking everything, when we put out the financial statements, of course, starting with the income statement, we're pretty confident that we didn't miss anything, that everything is there. So after we've done all those seven different entries to Sierra Corporation in learning objectives one and two that you were looking at in the book, look how Sierra Corporation's trial balance has changed after the adjustments. So here's the adjusted trial balance for Sierra Corporation. Notice you see a whole series of red numbers here. Right? Well, the accounts that have all these red numbers listed are the accounts that were uh, affected by the adjustment process, okay? So you should be able to pair these accounts just by looking at them. What's the pair? Uh, that accounts, rece accounts receivable is our first number here that we see that's red. Well, can you think of an adjusting entry that you did that included and affected accounts receivable? Well, you'd have to go to learning objective three, right? Because the accrued revenue is that. We debited account receivable and we credited service revenue. So service revenue is also in red because that pair of accounts is part of that adjustment, right? Look at the second account that has a red balance here showing it's changed, supplies. Well, we know that supplies is also part of that adjustment process. And you know the other account associated with that in the adjustment process is supplies expense. So you see supplies expense and supplies are affected because 
they have the red numbers showing they're effective because they're part of that adjustment process that you went through. You see prepaid insurance is also effective. Well, why was that? Well, because in learning objective two, right next to supplies, right? After we've used the prepaid insurance, we can expense it. So you have an insurance expense debit and you had a prepaid insurance credit. That was the adjusting entry. This is how it looks in the adjusted trial balance because the balances in those accounts changed with that entry. You see accumulated depreciation has a credit balance for $40 and you think back, well, that was also a deferred expense, right? That was also a prepaid expense. Uh, the equipment depreciates over time in a very slow manner. So we learned about depreciation expense, right? So there was the debit to depreciation expense, giving depreciation expense a balance, the credit to accumulate depreciation, which provided the balance here. So those were back in learning objective three, you probably recall. I'm uh, sorry, learning, learning objective two, you probably recall here. So here, the next red number that you saw here change is interest payable. Well, this is learning objective three because we had to have an accrued expense. We wanted to take the interest expense in October, in October, and set up the payable to show we're going to pay it later. So interest expense, debit, interest payable credit is also that adjusting entry that we did in the very last objective, right? That's part of the accruals. You look, unearned service revenue is affected. That's, that number is also red. How is unearned service revenue affected in the adjustment process? Well, you go back to um, deferred revenue and that means unearned service revenue is a liability, but after you earned it, you have to move that into service revenue. So you debit unearned revenue, credit service revenue. That's also an adjusting entry that you did. And here you see a salaries and wages payable account here with the red balance, meaning that balance was changed. How was that balance changed? Well, because we took a salaries and wages payable, we uh, expense rather, in that month, it's the accrued expense, and we needed to credit the payable to show we're going to pay that later. So look, all of your accounts that are have red balances here are the exact accounts that you used in the adjustment process. So the adjusted trial balance isn't going to affect accounts like cash or dividends because they're not part of the adjusting entries that we learned in the last two objectives. Okay. But as you know, all the other accounts that do have red balances were part of that adjustment process that we just did in learning objectives two and three. Okay. So now that we actually have the, adjusting, uh, the adjusted trial balance done, and as you see here, the debit side accounts and the credit side accounts do balance, this becomes the source to do our financial statements. And the very, very first financial statement that you do, as you know, is the income statement. And this makes perfect sense. The income statement is the very, very first statement that we do. And look at all the adjusting entries that we did. All the adjusting entries affected either revenues or expenses. They also affected a balance sheet account, as you know. But specifically, we had to make sure this entire process, we had to make sure all the revenue and all the expenses are accounted for, right? That's revenue recognition, expense recognition, principles. And the income statement measures a period of time, right? One month up to one year. That's the periodicity assumption you learned at the beginning of this chapter. So all of this plays out because the income statement being the first statement that we have to prepare, it's important that we get those numbers right. It flows. Where does it flow after that? Well, it goes to the retained earnings statement. Okay. But if we screw up the income statement, whatever we move for net income, for example, on the retained earnings statement, if we screw it up, although that number is going to be screwed up too. And then of course it flows down to the balance sheet. So not good. Um, but it's the adjusted trial balance that we use to create the income statement. 
first and foremost. So here's the adjusted trial balance that you just saw on the other page. It's just shrunken a little bit. And I'm sorry to make everybody squint. Uh, yes, that's right. Um, and these numbers here, right? The very, very first statement that we do, I mean, that's a number one. Do you have a number one for me? Uh, then the very first statement that we do is the income statement, right? The income statement. And of course, you know what goes on in income statement, right? The revenues are the very first things that we put on the income statement and the revenue account, as you see here, service revenue. This number is the number. <laughs> that you use for revenue here. So this is how your, your income statement is done. Right? Revenue started, where do you get this, this 10,600? Where did it come from? Right here. And then of course you list all your expenses. Each individual expense account is listed. This book likes to put it from large number to small number. Okay. So this is how this is set up. Where do all these expenses come from? Right here, the exact numbers right here, the exact accounts right here. From the adjusted trial balance, someone a little, it's almost like you lifted it up and just plopped it on this income statement because that's exactly what happened. All of the expenses are listed individually. The total expenses are, of course, you know, all of these added together. So this is the purpose of the adjusted trial balance. We know that these numbers are good on the income statement because all of these numbers here, revenue and expenses, reflect the adjusted numbers, right? We went through that double checking process. We did our adjusting entries. Those are the new balances. And we're pretty sure those balances are as accurate as they can be. So those are the balances we use to create our statements. As you see here, uh, this company, uh, Sierra Corporation, ending the month of October, again, periodicity, right, assumption. State income statement, retained earning statement are for periods of time. And it's one month at a time up to a year, no more, right? This particular company, Sierra Corporation, had a profit in, in the month of October of $2,860. Okay, uh, and we also can feel pretty darn good that this number, this profit for the month is accurate. Okay, because we did all those adjustments and we have faith that these numbers are, are good. So this number is good. The second uh, statement that we do comes from the first statement, right? You can never do a retained earnings statement first because you have to calculate net income first. Okay. So income statements always first, retained earnings statements always second. They both measure the same period of time. So they're both subject to periodicity assumption uh, and those rules that apply. So first thing is Sierra Corporation is a brand new company it's retained earnings for um, October of zero because it has no previous profit and loss because it just started in October. So the beginning balance for retained earnings October the 1st is zero. And it comes from the adjusted trial balance, right? This is the adjusted trial balance, this is the source of the numbers that we use. Mm -hmm. We add the net income that we just calculated here on the income statement. Now, this particular statement gives you a balance, these two numbers added together. And then, as you know, we take away the dividends. How do we know what the dividends are? Guess where we're looking for that? Mm -hmm. You just trial balance has those numbers, and here we go. We know dividends were $500 because it says so right here. We subtract out the $500. We have our balance of retained earnings at the end of October, 2,360, right? $500 less than the profit because they shared $500 of the profit as a dividend with the owners. Cool. So these are the first two statements that we've done. 
And now we have a new retained earnings balance. Now we know this balance is gonna be transferred to the balance sheet, okay, very soon. How soon? Right now. The very third financial statement that we do, the last one, is the balance sheet. Notice the balance sheet is not, is not subject to periodicity assumption because it doesn't measure a period of time. It only tells us what's happening that day in terms of what our assets are, what our liabilities are, and what our stockholders' equity is that day. That's it, right? So it falls out of that category. Um, it's different. As you know, assets are listed first. All the accounts are listed here. Where do these accounts and balances come from? The adjusted trial balance. This shows our very latest numbers, right, from the ledger. And all of these accounts here are asset accounts that are simply moved to the balance sheet. Notice how your equipment, you subtract out accumulated depreciation of that equipment. That's why it's a credit side balance to show the difference. This is the book value of the equipment. Your total assets, 21,910 bucks are all your asset accounts added together. Liabilities and stockholders equity, liabilities always go first here. All these are liability accounts. Where did these come from? Right here. Okay. Not exactly in the same order because again, this book likes to put things on their statements from large numbers to, uh, to smaller numbers. Um, yeah, it's a quirk. Of, of Wiley. Um, total liabilities are listed, of course, in the far right column of the sheet here, the balance sheet showing a total liability amount of 9,550, okay? Stockholders equity has two accounts that we're very familiar with. Common stock, which is right here, right? Common stock has a balance of 10,000. That's what you see here. Retained earnings does not come from here. Where does it come from? The previous sheet, the retained earnings statement. So the 2360 comes from the retained earnings statement, that second sheet that we that we did right after the income statement, right? So that's where this balance comes from here. Total stockholders equity was 12,360. Add these two together, lo and behold, 21,910, so our assets equal our liabilities and stockholders equity like they're supposed to equal, right? So perfect. And again, all the financial statements that we prepared, we got those numbers from the adjusted trial balance. The only exception is we had to figure out what our retained earnings were. This is simply a beginning balance. Whatever number is here on any adjusted trial balance, is the starting point, okay, is the starting point for retained earnings, not the ending. The ending point will show up here. Okay. All right, so we're not gonna discuss that uh, at this point. We I will deal with it <coughs> in terms of quality of earnings stuff uh, when we get into more analysis next uh, accounting 102. So uh, the do it exercise for a, um, this is sort of a review of everything that we just looked at. It's on page, uh, this is on page 174. Uh, it's not my favorite do it exercise because after showing you how to do all those financial statements in order, um, it doesn't do that. This book doesn't actually give you that type of a problem for the do it exercise. So it's, that's exhausting to me uh, to deal with. Um, but normally speaking, you would be getting an, uh, an adjusted trial balance and you'd be doing the financial statements from that. Or you would need to actually do an adjusted trial balance, which means you need to do the adjustments first, post them, get the new balances and do an adjusted trial balance. And then from that, you can do your financial statements. So let's review this just because it's, it is in your book and it is something that people do study and it's not like it's uh, useless information is actually quite good. It's just not in 
Uh, it's not in the uh, specific order that I'd like it to be in. Um, oh, in the homework, uh, I, I can look at it after this, Nick, okay? I just released the homework for, for, for this class. Um, so here we have Slotnik. Uh, this uh, company just started on April the 1st. Okay, and you know that because the beginning balance and retained earnings here is zero. So it just started a in April. This company is not doing a monthly statement. What they're doing is a quarterly statement. So this represents a full three months, um, three months of, of information, okay? So here it's listed at, as an adjusted trial balance. You have your, your accounts with debit balances listed here, your accounts with credit balances listed uh, to the right side here. And as you see, they, they balance. And so this is good. These will become the numbers that you can use to do your financial statements. And that's what I'm disappointed in with this. The first thing should be, it says determine the net income, which is basically create, a, create an income statement. So why didn't they just do it? I don't know. Um, as you see here, what you have to do is you have to find uh, for an income statement, you have to find the revenue account. So this particular company actually has two revenue accounts, service revenue and rent revenue, okay? Has two revenue accounts here. And then here are all the expenses, starting with salaries and wages expense, all the way down to interest expense. So these are the accounts and the numbers that you would use to create your income statement. Okay, uh, and then they just want you, we'll just do one at a time. So let's just look at the income statement here. Um, so we have revenues, again, service revenues or rent revenues, two revenue accounts for this company. Um, and again, this is for the quarter, because right, it's a three month period, April to June. So total revenue is listed on the right side as 15,000. Okay, that's total revenue, those two numbers added together. We have our expense accounts. All of these accounts are listed in the adjusted trial balance. You're just plucking them off of that and sticking them here. The only thing different you're gonna do is give a total expense on the far right side. And this company did pretty good for its first quarter as its revenues are greater than the expenses. So they are able to claim net income of 2490. Okay, 2490, which is good. Let me go back here. Um, again, what I would have had you do is simply a retained earnings statement next and then a balance sheet. But um, again, it's a slightly disappointing. They kind of do it in, rever in reverse order. They, they kind of do it in reverse order. So here B, they ask you just to see what's the total assets and liabilities at the end of that period of time, which is June 30th. It's the end of the quarter, April, May, and June, three month period. Yeah. Uh, for Slotnik, well, uh, your assets, again, you're, there, there are a few places, right? So cash, all the way equipment, these are all asset accounts, but you also have to include your accumulated depreciation for equipment. Yes, yes. Uh, because you, you have to find a book value for that equipment, right? the difference between those two. And then all your liability accounts are listed here up to unearned revenue. Okay, and those are your balances that you would use. So when we look at the answer for this part B, for this exercise, you have your uh, asset accounts listed. Again, we have to take away that accumulated depreciation. We have to look on the credit side for that. Right? Uh, total amount of assets, 23,350, that is fine. Your liability, uh, listed here as uh, notes payable all the way down to interest payable. All these accounts you also found on the adjusted trial balance with those balances. Liabilities were 7460. So obviously the difference is going to be your stockholders equity. Right? They ask us to do a retained earning statement. So let's go and go back to the information. So retained earning statement, right? Uh, we have beginning retained earnings, which in this company's case, it's brand new, zero. We add our net income, which we did on the income statement. 
We subtract our dividends. How do we know what dividends are? We have the dividends balance listed on the adjusted trial balance. And those are the pieces of information we need to know to do the retained earnings statement, right? And so here we have retained earnings statement part C. Beginning retained earnings in April is zero because it's a brand new company. We add the net income that you, that you produced when you did the income statement in part A. You subtract out the dividends. This number comes from the trial balance that you looked at, the adjusted trial balance. So the retained earnings at the very end of June, 1890. Okay. So that's where I want to focus today. Again, you know, uh, you've done all this is this is the time when I said, remember chapter three repeats in chapter four. This is it. This is where it's repeating uh, because you're doing those financial statements that you've been doing for a while again. Um, but this time you're using the adjusted trial balance to get those numbers. And actually that's exactly where we look, okay, to do that, to do that. So um, questions? <laughs> 